So good uh, evening and welcome uh, to all today's discussion on cardiovascular examine uh, cardiovascular system question solution. This is the uh, probably third class. We have to take uh, several classes to complete the full question set. Uh, so let us start today. Our uh, question is a 17-year-old 70, uh, male presents to the emergency department with an episode of collapse. The 17-year-old male and episode of collapse witness report he became extremely blue at the time of collapse, which occurred on walking. So, uh, uh, history that a patient that has a 17 year old patient collapsed when he was on walking. The patient tells you he, uh, he has a history of congenital heart disease. The patient is suffering from congenital heart disease. On examination, you note it is a centrally cyanosed. Centrally cyanosed, which of the following congenital conditions is the most likely explanation of this presentation? This patient probably is suffering from congenital heart disease, and as he has cyanosis, so this is probably due to congenital cyanotic heart disease. And then we, uh, we should know what are the causes of congenital cyanotic heart disease and what are the causes of congenital cyanotic heart disease. And uh, the five uh, options uh, uh, here are the coarctation of the aorta, congenital heart block, patent from an ovary, tetralogial fallot, or parkinson white syndrome. Coarctation of the aorta, it is a non cyanotic congenital heart disease. So the coarctation of the aorta, it is a non extensive of shant kothao nai, so uh, there is no shunt here. So, we have congenital heart block. We have congenital heart block. We have electrical block. We have a shunt. 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 We shunt. We have a shunt. Uh, there is the least chance of developing cyanotic heart disease. If a tetralogy of fallots, jet amra bolte si, tetralogy of fallote actually amader jeta ase. Chet overriding of the aorta, hai, pulmonary stenosis thake, right ventricular hypertrophy thake. Shudang jeto ito thake. Shudang ekhte amader holo. Ekhte amader holo. The tetralogy of fallot is the most uh, probable cause of uh, the um, uh, cause of this patient with collapse, with cyanosis, with congenital heart disease. Our old Parkinson White syndrome, it is an electrical jet activity, jet PR interval short, the delta wave, the ACG. This patient is usually present with supraventricular tachycardia. So there is no chance of having, uh, though it is a con congenital heart disease, but uh, there is no chance of having. Uh, chance of having uh, 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 cyanosis or collapse. So um, uh, uh, the, uh, here uh, there are uh, some causes of congenital cyanotic heart disease. There it is. When there is a right to left shunt within the heart or outside the heart, then uh, usually cyanosis develops. So what are the uh, five causes of uh, um, uh, cyanosis? Is the truncus arteriosus, transposition of the gate vessels, like as Gratasia, Tetralogia, Fellow, Total Alumas, Palmae Venus. So, uh, so uh, most likely, uh, uh, actually, uh, these are the five T, easy to remember. Uh, is a one to five mnemonic, and easy to remember. There is five T, truncus arteriosus, transposition of the gate vessels, truncus atresia, Tetralogia, Fellow, and Total Alumas, Palmae Venus. Venus. So tetralogy of fallot is the cause of congenital cyanotic heart disease and what is the cause of congenital cyanotic heart disease? That means when there is a left to right shunt, uh, so there is a, no chance uh, of mixing of the blood um, uh, uh, or ch chance of coming uh, or deoxygenated blood to the oxygenated, uh, ox oxygenated chamber. So there is a chance of uh, having cyanosis, but in case of left to right shunt, there is a uh, no chance of 
uh, the development of the cyanosis. This is the atrial septal defect, ventricular septal defect, PTA, and coactus of the aorta. These are the four important cause and common causes of adult congenital cyanotic heart disease. So uh, this is the, another question uh, here, a 70 year old man with a background of ischemic heart disease and peripheral arterial disease presents to the emergency department. So these um, uh, so senior citizen having ischemic heart disease and peripheral arterial disease, he had been feeling generally unwell for the past two days with fever and myalgia and morning uh, uh, developed a purple cold late middle toe. On examination, there are signs of early ischemia to the toe and faint levator reticularis rash is seen on the foot. A diagnosis of the cholesterol embolization is suspected. Which of the following features would be most supportive for, of this diagnosis? Lymphocytosis, thrombocytosis, neutrophilia, thrombocytopenia, eosinophilia. Is it levator reticularis? This is the features of cholesterol embolization. And this is the cholesterol embolization syndrome, uh, it is called. It is one of the important features by the eosinophilia. It is one of the eosinophilia. So eosinophilia um, is, the, is the embolization, the cholesterol embolization. Uh, and, uh, and this is the um, uh, actually um, uh, findings of the, uh, uh, the findings actually. Uh, here is the uh, blood findings are the uh, eosinophilia is the common finding, laboratory findings here, the eosinophilia is the common findings. Then another question, so now we, uh, we shift down to the next question, which of the following is true of Eisenmenger syndrome. At first, what is Eisenmenger syndrome? Eisenmenger syndrome is a condition when there is a reversal of the shunt occurs. Reversal, usually we know that there is a shunt. Shunt anomaly means there is a HD, VHD, PDA, there is a shunt. So shunting means there is a passage of blood from the left chamber to the right chamber or right chamber to the left chamber. This is called shunting of the blood. And when there is a reversal of the shunt, that is when blood passes from the right side of the chamber to the left side, and uh, this is called uh, sh uh, reversal of the shunt. And when there is reversal of the shunt, there will be mixing of the oxygenated deoxygenated blood in the uh, left side of the chamber. And this blood is circulated throughout the whole body. So patient develops cyanosis, as well as patient develop uh, clavying also. So, uh, and, uh, and this condition is called Eisenmenger syndrome. So uh, uh, here are five options. So breathlessness and fatigue are con uncommon symptoms. These are the not uncommon, the, but, uh, but these are the actually common symptoms. Breathlessness and fatigue are the common symptoms. It occurs in patients with patent from an ovary. Patent from an ovary, they usually, uh, actually there is uh, no assignment uh, syndrome occurs because there is a very small am amount of blood is shunted from the uh, left chamber to the right chamber. So there is a least chance of um, uh, developing Eisenmenger syndrome here. And uh, it occurs in patients with trimenovalis. This is not true. Left to right shunting occurs because of the pulmonary hypertension. This is a pulmonary hypertension. Usually there is a right to left shunting, not left to right shunting. So this is not also the right answer. Life expectancy is markedly reduced. When a patient suffering from Eisenmenger syndrome, as is oxygen saturation is markedly deteriorated or markedly reduced within, in the blood, so if this patient life expectancy is actually markedly reduced. And so uh, um, uh, this patient actually, um, uh, this is the actual, I think this, this uh, uh, should be the answer here. And patients are peripherally but not centrally cyanose. As the uh, deoxygenated blood uh, are circulating throughout the whole body. So patient develops peripheral cyanosis as well as central cyanosis. So cyanosis present both in the lips, tongues, and also in the acral parts, that is distal parts of the body or peripheral parts of the body, of the body that is in the fingers also cyanosis present. So this is the, this cyanosis is um, actually uh, present both centrally and peripherally. Both are cyanose. So this is not the true. So the true answer is the life expectancy is markedly reduced in case of Eisenmenger syndrome.
So uh, this is the actually Eisenmenger syndrome. There are some uh, features of Eisenmenger syndrome. So in Eisenmenger syndrome, there is a shunt reversal. There is a initially left to right shunt. That, sh that shunt should be large enough to shunting the blood and produces a hypalmonary hypertension. And this hyperpalmonary hypertension then causes the reversal of the shunt. That is, there is a right ventricular hypertrophy, right ventricular pressure will be raised. And when the right ventricular pressure exceeds the left ventricular pressure, there will be reversal of the shunt. So um, uh, uh, though initially there is a left to right shunt, but subsequently when there is a pressure increased uh, in the right side than the left side, then left right to left uh, right shunt occurs and that causes the sinuses also. And due to blood shunted right, by, by patient develop pulmonary hypertension to the point of right pressure exceeding the left, and that causes the shunt reversal, and that is the actually cause of the development of the cyanosis that causes central as well as peripheral cyanosis. This is the so acquired cyanotic, um, uh, 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 acquired, actually, it may be called acquired cyanotic heart disease. Though the congenital, congenital cyanotic heart disease, um, ASD, VSD, and PDA, but this Eisenmenger syndrome occurs uh, in, the, in the latter part of the body. So, latter part of the life, so uh, this is called acquired cyanotic heart disease. The, so it is poor prognostic sign, no management, there's the reversal of so the heart-lung transplantation is the, actually, this is the only hope, and this is the actually main stop treatment in case of Eisenmenger syndrome. Now uh, we move to uh, next questions uh, uh, that describes a 48, uh, a 48 year old woman registers with a new family physician. She tells the doctor she had a small hole in her heart from birth, but that it did not require any treatment. That is, the patient has a small hole, uh, that, is, uh, that is the shunting uh, uh, um, uh, anomalies or shunting disease. On examination, pulse is 70 beats per minute and regular BP 122 by 76 millimeter mercury. You detect a loud high pitched systolic murmur at the left external border accompanied by a thrill. Which of the following condition would explain the history and physical finding? So, what we should know here that is, the patient had a hole that is, there is a chanting uh, anomaly. Uh, uh, there is a, um, a, a hole in the heart, so this patient may have ASD, VSD, or PDA. And as this patient has high pitched, uh, loud systolic murmur, the left external uh, border. At this point, one should know what are the causes of systolic murmur at the left external border. So then, in, in that point, it is easy to. Now diagnose the uh, actually the cause of the, uh, the uh, murmur of this uh, uh, of this lady also. So uh, anterior mitral leaflet prolapse that is that doesn't cause uh, actually systolic murmur the leaflet external border, uh, but that causes uh, may, that may cause a pan-systolic murmur in the apical area. Actual septal defect that doesn't uh, produce a systolic murmur the leaflet external border. Uh, and pattern from an ovary, there is a, a least chance of having any murmur also. PDA pattern doctor arteriosus murmur in the right upper external border below the clavicle. It is a murmur is found, and this murmur is usually uh, not uh, um, uh, is a uh, uh, continuous type of murmur. That is, uh, this murmur present uh, both in systole and also in diastole. So this is not a systolic murmur, and the remaining option is ventricular septal defect. We all know that in ventricular septal defect, there is a systolic murmur, and the systolic murmur is really present in the left external border, and it is accompanied by a thrill, and this murmur radiates from the left side of the heart to the right side of the heart. So this uh, uh, lady actually had um, the, uh, the type of lesion is ventricular septal defect, and it is a, a shunting type of anomaly within the heart. So this is, uh, I think this is the, um, the correct answer here. So ventricular septal defect is the answer. Uh, and uh, when we recapitulate the murmur in different sides of the heart, 
systolic marma in the different site, then it is right upper sternal border is the aortic stenosis marma. Here, aortic stenosis marma is the best heart. In the upper left sternal border, there is a pulmonary stenosis or pulmonary gargi, pulmonary, especially pulmonary stenosis marma is the best heart. In the left lower sternal border, that, uh, that is the uh, actually point of discussion uh, uh, regarding this uh, question is the tricuspid regurgitation, ventricular septal defect, and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. These three conditions usually produces systolic murmur in the left lower sternal border. So these are the differential diagnosis of this patient. Uh, as this patient has got uh, also thrill, and there is a hole also in tricuspid regurgitation, there is no hole in the heart, and any hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, there is no hole in the heart. So, the answer should be the only ventricular septal defect. And this is the apical systolic marma is the mitral regurgitation marma. So these are the, uh, actually uh, in defined side, there is the defined causes of systolic marma here. Now we shift to the next questions. You get blip in the middle of your night shift to talk to a worried father whose daughter has been admitted with cyanosis. He tells you that they were ever she had had a murmur since birth, but it has only been the last few days in which she has had symptoms. You believe that this is a case of Eisenmenger syndrome. What is the medical definition of the Eisenmenger syndrome? Eisenmenger syndrome already we discussed. Now we have to give the, find out the correct answers within these five options given here. So uh, what is the def medical definition of the Eisenmenger syndrome? The reversal of the right to left shunt, uh, actually uh, not the, the that uh, uh, street, that is the reversal of the left to right shunt actually, an audible ventricular septal defect, that is not true here, uh, but because in that case, when reversal of the shunt occurs, usually in case of ventricular septal defect, the systolic murmur actually doesn't hurt because the systolic murmur is much reduced due to the reversal of the shunt. Actually, in that cases, the harsh, uh, loud systolic murmur just disappears in case of uh, ventricular septal defect with Eisenmenger syndrome. So presence of a ventricular septal defect alongside an atrial septal defect, that is not correct. Um, either a ventricular septal defect or atrial septal defect that can produce Eisenmenger syndrome as there is a large ventricular septal defect or large atrial septal defect and that produces um, pulmonary hypertension and this pulmonary hypertension causes right ventricular hypertrophy and this pressure, rising pressure in the right ventricle when exceeds the pressure on the late ventricle. Uh, so um, um, uh, then, um, uh, actually uh, shunting of the reversal of the shunting occurs and patient develops cyanosis. And the reversal of the left to right shunt, I think this is the right answer. Usually in case of SD, VSD, and PD, these are dysentery congenital heart disease. And usually there is a, a shunting of the left to right shunt. But when there is a reversal of the, this left to right shunt occurs, that is called Eisenmenger syndrome. All four of the following overriding out of pulmonary stenosis, right ventricular hypertrophy, and ventricular septal defect. Actually, this is the four features that depicts the diagnosis of a tetralogy of fallow. This tetralogy means four points or four features. The four features are the following four features like overriding of the outer pulmonary stenosis, right ventricular hypertrophy, and ventricular septal defect. That indicates actually the tetralogy uh, 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 of fallot. But so the correct answer is D, the reversal of the left to right shunt. So these are the actually Eisenmenger syndrome pathophysiology, systemic to pulmonary circulation connection, that is uh, um, uh, shunting of the blood, abnormal connection between the two chambers of the heart or two sides of the actually as is the pulmonary side and the systemic side. There is the abnormal connection between the pulmonary side and systemic side. Left right shunting of the blood, increased pulmonary blood flow, irreversible pulmonary vascular injury that causes irreversible pulmonary vascular resistance, and then shunt right to left shunting of the blood occurs. 
and that develops hypoxia and erythrocytosis. Now we should move to the next question. A 21 year old man presents with the recent history of an influenza like illness, initially characterized by fever, myalgia, and headache. He develops chloritic type of chest discomfort and breathlessness. On examination, pulses 105 beats per minute and regular blood pressure 105 over the 60 millimeter mercury. The JBP is not elevated. Heart sounds of first and second heart sound are present with a loud to and fro heart sound present in systole and diastole. Which of the following condition explains that legal condition? Acute viral pericarditis, aortic valve endocarditis, mitral valve endocarditis, persistent ductus arteriosus, pulmonary embolism. What is the difference between to and fro murmur? And what is the difference between to and fro murmur from the um, continuous murmur? And what are the causes of actually to and fro murmur? As this patient has got fever, myalgia, and headache, and also priority type of chest discomfort and breathlessness, so most likely and pulse the patient is also tachycardic. So patient is probably, this patient has got some degree of infection right, that may be within the heart. So uh, this patient may have viral pericarditis, patient may have aortic valve endocarditis or mitral valve endocarditis. Persistent ductus arteriosus PDA can cause, this is the uh, continuous murmur, not to and fro murmur. What is the difference between continuous murmur and to and fro murmur? In case of continuous murmur, Systole, this is the this murmur presence both in systole and diastole, and second heart sound cannot be differentiated and cannot be uh, audible separately. That is, there is this murmur is continuous both in the systole over the diastole. In case of um, uh, continuous murmur, but to and fro murmur, the murmur present both in systole and both diastole, but Second heart sound is distinctly audible. So the difference is that there is a gap, uh, that there's gap, there is the second heart sound gap for the second heart sound um, is present uh, in between the systolic murmur and diastolic murmur. So this is the difference. So the most common causes of the this uh, loud, the to and fro murmur is actually the aortic uh, valvular disease, especially aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation. So the, when there is aortic valve involvement, actually that produces to and fro murmur. So aortic valve endocarditis that causes the endocarditis causes fever, myalgia, and headache. Also lies pleuritic type of chest discomfort and breathlessness. And the patient is tachycardic. So aortic valve endocarditis actually causes the, uh, the to and fro murmur as well as the endocarditis like that is the problem uh, that features like fever, myalgia, and all the all the features actually. So, aortic valve endocarditis is the, actually the answer. And pulmonary, though pulmonary, this patient present with proactive of the chest discomfort. Actually, this proactive of chest discomfort is the features of pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary is the features of pulmonary embolism. So, actually, this pulmonary, this is actually, though pulmonary is about there, it should not be any history of fever, myalgia, and headache. And pulmonary embolism doesn't cause actually any type of to and fro murmur. So to and cause of to and fro murmur is the aortic valve endocarditis. So and uh, second, that is B or two in the answer. So uh, actually, uh, the difference between the to and fro murmur and continuous murmurs are depicted very clearly here. Is the continuous murmur the PDA that is a PDA murmur, and the second heart sound is not actually distinctly audible, and this second heart sound cannot be uh, separated from the actually the uh, systolic and diastolic murmur. So it is the continuous with the systolic and diastolic murmur. But in case of to and fro murmur, there is a, a murmur in between the first and second heart sound. And, uh, the, and after the second heart sound, there is an uh, early diastolic murmur for the AR aortic scene. So this is the ejection systolic murmur for the aortic stenosis. And this is the early diastolic murmur uh, for the aortic agitation. So when there is the aortic stenosis as well as aortic gradation present, that produces actually to and fro murmur. And to and fro murmur, so the, when there is aortic valve involvement and there is the aortic valve 
endocarditis. This aortic valve endocarditis can cause actually the um, um, aortic regurgitation over the aortic stenosis. So there is a uh, actually uh, some causes of continuous murmur. Um, the cause of continuous murmur here. Next, we move to the uh, next questions. Uh, you have been asked to supervise an exercise lens test TTT for a 70 year old patient with a suspected ischemic heart disease who has been experiencing exertional chest pain. He has had no recent episodes of severe chest pain and feels well today. Before starting the test, his pulse is 84 beats per, per minute and blood pressure is 130 over 80 millimeter mercury. Once the ATT has begun, which of the following is the strongest indication for stopping the test? So these are the questions about the actual ATT test. So ATT test, the, what are the actually the strong indication for stopping the yeah, blood pressure of 105 or 20 million? Actually, this is not the indication at all. Heart rate of 130 per minute. Uh, that may possible when there is a, a, a actually target heart rate. If it is target heart rate achieved, then it may be a, a actually a indication. And systolic really blood pressure of 215 millimeter mercury, that may be an indication when there is inappropriate rise of blood pressure. Uh, uh, in that cases, that may be a cause, that may be an indication. HD depression of two millimeter, uh, that, that, uh, that, uh, that also an indication of diminution of the uh, blood pressure, but ST elevation of one millimeter, that, that is ST elevation, that is very much important, that patient may go into the acute myocardial infarction with ST elevation, that is acute insult, uh, insult of um, ischemic episode. So ST elevation of one millimeter, actually this is the answer here, and this is the, actually the uh, strongest indication of for stopping the, 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 these are the, also some indications here, but uh, the strongest uh, indication is the ST elevation of one millimeter mercury. So actually these are the indications, uh, that is absolute indications for time and exercise test. That is the, at first that is ST elevation more than one millimeter in leads without QA because of the previous MI other than a VR, a BL or B1. So uh, this is the actually at a, at this the strongest indication, drop in the systolic blood pressure of 10 millimeter mercury from the baseline. That an important actually that is that uh, indicates that there is severe ischemia and there may be LV dilatation also and that causes the drop of the blood pressure. Moderate to severe angina in that cases uh, we should stop uh, ETT. Increasing nervous system symptoms like ataxia, dizziness, or near syncope uh, and that uh, should be an indication. And uh, signs of poor perfusion like cyanosis. If patient develops cyanosis or pallor, then uh, we should stop the ETT. Technical difficulties in monitoring ECG or systolic blood pressure. That is technical difficulties. We should not go further. After stopping the ITT, then we should restart the ITT. And subject desire to stop. Yes, that is the important cause. If the, the patient uh, wants to stop, our patient doesn't want to um, uh, walk more, <coughs> then we should stop. Sustained ventricular tachycardia. If ventricular tachycardia persists or sustained, then we should stop the uh, the uh, next question, what is the appropriate initial treatment for the symptoms of acute pericarditis? If a patient suffering from acute pericarditis, uh, to relieve the actually the symptom means that relieve the pain actually, what is the treatment? Intravenous glucocorticoids, intravenous morphine, oral amiodarone, oral aspirin, rectal diclofenac. Actually, uh, to relieve the symptoms of acute pericarditis, that is to relieve the uh, chest pain of acute pericarditis, usually NSIDS actually is the ideal treatment. So rectal diclofenac uh, uh, may be the, actually the uh, option in uh, uh, This is the actual NSAID, ibuprofen or naproxen or indomethacin and or aspirin may be preferred in patient with the MI. So uh, actually, um, uh, NSAID therapy especially, this is the actually uh, to relieve the symptoms like chest pain, uh, actually NSAID is the treatment. So here NSAID is the diclofen. So this, uh, we should uh, shift to the next question here, which of the following which describes dilated cardiomyopathy. A risk of the myocardium characterized by chambered enlargement and thinning of the left and right ventricular walls 
yes, that I may be the answer. A disease of the myocardium characterized by disruptive thickening of the interventricular septum that is not a dilated cardiopathy, that may be uh, um, ischemic cardiomyopathy, as well as de that definition. A disease of the myocardium characterized by infiltration of myocardial tissue is a restricted contraction, is the restrictive cardiomyopathy, actually, not dilated. Isolated dilatation of the atria causing atrial fibrillation. That is not actually not cause of dilated cardiomyopathy. In that case, usually left atrial and right ventricle both are dilated. Isolated dilatation of the right ventricle causing ventricular tachycardia. That is not also the actual actually uh, um, um, uh, atmospheric right ventricular dysplasia. Actually, this is the definition here. So, a disease of the myocardium affected by chamber enlargement and thinning of the left and right ventricular walls. Actually, this is the answer here of the dilated cardiomyopathy is the evaluation of the LV wall thickness. Um, actually, uh, um, uh, 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 the, the decreased LV wall thickness general hole should take a DCM. Next, we move to another question. A 35 years old woman who presents with progressive dyspnea is diagnosed as having primary pulmonary hypertension. So this question is about PPAs, primary pulmonary hypertension. She started on endothelial receptor antagonist. You all know that endothelial receptor antagonist, the 81 receptor blocker, uh, ET receptor, this is the one of the actually mode of, mode of treatment options of, uh, of primary pulmonary hypertension, which is the aim of this treatment. So actually, the, why we actually give endothelial receptor blocker uh, to treat the primary pulmonary hypertension. Increase blood flow to the lungs. Uh, maybe increase blood flow to the um, lungs, but this is the, not the actual answer. Reduce the risk of secondary pulmonary fibrosis. Not the answer. Reduce pulmonary vascular resistance, leading to the reduced right ventricular switch. Actually, this is the answer here. When there is an endothelial receptor blocker that causes dilatation of the pulmonary artery, that reduces the pulmonary vascular resistance, and that uh, causes the a reduced right ventricular systolic pressure. So there is a right ventricular function also improved in this patient. Decrease the pulmonary venous pressure. This is not the answer. Increase the oxygen saturation of the venous blood flow into the left atrium. Also, this is not the answer. So C is, C is the correct answer, most appropriate answer here, because um, uh, we use endothelial receptor blocker um, uh, in a patient with primary pulmonary hypertension to reduce the pulmonary vascular resistance leading to reduced right ventricular systolic pressure. This is the primary pulmonary hypertension, actually. Uh, this is the actually vasodilator. So use endothelial antagonist, oral bosentan, or uh, postaglandin E5 inhibitor. We can also use, like oral sildenafil, or IP prostol can be used. So this is the mechanism of action of endothelial receptor blocker here. So endothelial receptor blocker that causes the, the individual contraction of the proliferation and migration of the muscle cells. So there is a relaxation of these muscle cells. So there is a, a dilatation of the pulmonary vessels also. That, that is the that reduced pulmonary vascular pressure and that improves the uh, right ventricular function um, as well. So this is the uh, um, mechanism of action of the bosentan or in one of the endothelial receptor blocker uh, that blocks both endothelial A and endothelial B receptors, reducing exposure to vanocostic, vasoconstrictive, and, and proliferative effects of nepalin. And usually uh, we use bosentan 65, 2.5 milligram oral twice daily and titrate to 125 milligram oral twice daily. And monthly liver function tests are needed. Uh, next, another question is, which of the following is a cause of dilated cardiomyopathy? So there are five options here. So uh, among these five options, what is the uh, actually, most important or most probable cause of the elite cardiomyopathy, high cholesterol diet, it is not the answer. Heavy alcohol consumption, actually, actually this is the important cause of the elite cardiomyopathy. And uh, 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 actually, holiday heart syndrome, holiday heart syndrome. And mutation in cardiac sodium channel gene, obesity, recreational cannabis use. Actually, the most important and most appropriate answer here is the heavy alcohol consumption. So it is, I think this is the answer here. And also this is the alcohol. Actually, this is also important cause of valid cardiomyopathy. So we can stop here now for, for today. So already uh, we have discussed, I think, uh, 11 or 12 questions. 
So in the next class, uh, we'll have more questions, more newer questions to be discussed. Uh, love is.